This viscast looks at objects colliding and how to analyse them in terms of momentum. Pause the video for a moment to read the question carefully. Now that you've read the question, it should be clear that this problem is asking you to find the velocity of one of the objects, in this case the skateboarder, after they've had a collision with another object. There's quite a bit of information supplied here, including the masses of the object, in this case one of them is a rubber ball and the other is a skateboarder on their skateboard. It tells us what's happening before the collision, the directions and speeds involved in the motion, and it tells us what one of the objects is doing after the collision. Let's begin by drawing a diagram that gives us a simplified version of this problem. Here is our skateboarder, let's call them M1, and they're moving horizontally at initial speed of 5 meters per second. Moving in the opposite direction towards the skateboarder is a ball. Let's call that M2 and it's moving with a speed of 3.5 meters per second in the opposite direction. At some point a collision occurs and after that collision we're told that the ball is moving in the opposite direction to its initial motion with a speed now of 6 meters per second. And what we want to know is what's happening with M1. What's its speed and importantly because we were asked for a velocity what is its direction? So what's the speed of that skateboarder after the collision? How fast is it moving and in what direction? Now to understand how to approach this problem we need to think about what's going on just before the collision and just after the collision. We're moving along a horizontal surface, so if we think about the forces that are occurring here, each of these objects will have a weight downwards, but there'll also be a normal force on the object acting upwards, and there'll be no acceleration of these ob objects either upwards or downwards. Now, the only horizontal force that we can think about here would be the skateboarder pushing on the ball, and of course by Newton's third law, the ball must also push on the skateboard as this collision occurs. If we consider the system that we're going to analyze here to be the skateboarder and the ball, then we can see that as far as external forces on those objects are concerned, the net force on our system will be zero. Another way to think about that is that the rate of change of momentum will be zero. And of course that's a net force as a vector sum. If the rate of change of momentum is zero, that's telling me that the momentum of the system here is a conserved quantity. It doesn't change. And therefore my final momentum must be exactly the same as my initial momentum for the entire system. So let's think about the momentum initially. Initially for this system the momentum PI will be the momentum of object 1, that will be M1 V1 initial, and the momentum of object 2, that's the ball, that would be M2 V2 initial. And here we've made very careful note that all of these quantities, the momenta and the velocities, are going to be vector quantities. In this problem we can see everything is moving horizontally. Let's maybe define that direction off to the right there as the positive x direction, and maybe we can make upwards there as the positive y direction. But we can see there is no y momentum to consider here, nothing is moving or changing how it's moving in the y direction. So in fact we can consider simply the x components here. So for example p uh, initial in the x direction, what will that be? Well we can see that the velocity of, of the skateboarder m1 here is going to be a positive quantity. So I can just leave that as v where v will equal 5. And here the momentum uh, of object 2 initially is actually heading off to the left and that's the negative direction. So if I just choose V2i as the speed, 3.5 meters per second, then I need to put a minus sign in here to make sure I've indicated the momentum of object 2 initially is in the opposite direction to the momentum of object 1. What about the momentum of the system finally? Well I won't bother writing the vector equation down, I'll go straight to the x components and what's the x component 
of the momentum of the skateboarder after the collision. What's well, going to be the mass of the skateboarder and the final velocity of the skateboarder, M uh, V1F. Now, should this be, at the front here, a plus or a minus? Because at the moment, I don't know what direction the skateboarder moves after the collision. What I can do is I can decide, I think it might be that the skateboarder moves off to the right. And if that's the case, I simply want a plus sign out the front there. In fact, I can just remove that because there's always a plus sign there. What if my guess is wrong? What if the skateboarder, in fact, moves off to the left after the collision? All that will happen is when I finally do my calculation, I would get a negative value for V1F. And that would tell me that my initial guess was wrong, and in fact V1F pointed in the opposite direction to how it was drawn. So I can, in fact, make some kind of assumption at the start, and then my calculation, if it comes out that V1F is positive, that means I got the right direction. If it comes out that V1F is negative, that means it actually moves opposite to how I first indicated. So I'll leave it there, and now the momentum finally, the momentum after the collision for the ball, uh, it's heading off in the positive direction, so it will be M2 V2F. Now my conservation equation up here tells me that my final and my initial must be the same. So I can use these two equations here, putting them equal to each other, that's my momentum conservation, to find out that M1 V1 F plus M2 V2 F, that's my final momentum, must equal M1 V1 I minus M2 V2 I. That's my initial momentum. So I can now make V1 F, the final speed of the skateboarder, the subject of this formula. You might like to take a couple of lines to do it, but I can see that if I subtract M2 V2 F off both sides, and then divide through by M1, then I'll get V1 F all by itself. And so that leaves me with V1I minus M2 divided by M1 into V2I plus V2F. That's the correct arrangement. And now I can put numbers into this expression where the initial velocity of object 1 was 5, the mass of object 2 was 2.2 kilograms, and the mass of the skateboarder and the skateboard object 1 is 45 kilograms, and I multiply that by 3.5, which was the initial speed, and add that to 6, which is the final speed, and if I put that into my calculator and do it correctly, I get an answer here of 4.5 meters per second. Now, importantly, this answer is positive, and that tells me that in fact I made the correct assumption at the start that mass 1, the skateboarder and the skateboard, after the collision are actually moving in the same direction they started from. If this number had come out to be negative, then that would mean that the skateboarder was moving in the opposite direction. Is there any way we could understand this final velocity of the skateboarder being negative? Well, if you look back at the equation here, we can see that it consists of a positive part and a negative part. And in fact, if that negative part became larger than that positive part, we would indeed have ended up with a negative value for the velocity of the skateboarder. They would have been heading back in the opposite direction to which they came. What might make that part, that negative part, larger than the positive part? Well, one way it could occur is if mass 2 was much larger. So instead of 2.2 divided by 45, imagine if mass 2 was a similar number, maybe 30 or 40 kilograms. What would that mean? That would mean this ball here would be some object, very, very massive, at say 30 or 40 kilograms, heading towards the skateboarder. And if that very massive object collided and headed at 6 meters per second in the opposite direction to its motion, the skateboarder must have bounced off. It must have been, after the collision, heading back in the negative x direction.